October 31st, month in, will we continue this bear market bounce or are things about to get scary? <laughs> We're going to talk about our cycles, where we are, some charts, and a lot more. So sit back, let's go. Hello, this is Michael Loftus with Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First time here, welcome. I am a practicing financial advisor. We have a registered investment advisory firm. So what that means is what you hear here, we do apply to our investment models with our clients. So if you like what you hear, please do consider subscribing. Now, besides these market updates, We've just launched a new educational series, video podcast, video up here, podcast information below. So October 31st, month end. So we're getting month end markup with a lot of mutual fund companies. 25% of those funds are having year end. So even more markups, lots of stuff going on. We believe this is just another bear market bounce. We're going to show you why in this video. We're going to go through our market cycles first. We're going to talk about our charts. I love those charts, no doubt about that. Sector spotlight, what keeps me up at night, and we're going to talk about a game plan going forward to get you ready. So let's go to the big board. As part of our investment process, there's multiple steps. The first is market cycles, okay? Three factors here, growth inflation and policy. This comes from a research firm. We get all kinds of data. So if you've been here before, you know that we are in cycle four. Growth is slowing. Inflation decelerates, sort of. We're seeing more of a disinflation, very, very slow. Policy, a little bit different here because we're very hawkish. But this is not a good cycle, right? This is the worst cycle, in fact as it pertains to the overall market. So let's take a deeper dive. So first up, GDP. Last week, we came out with a 2.6 number. No recession, right? Well, hold on a second. You know, we had two negative quarters of GDP, which would normally confirm a recession. So still a little muddy at this point. But when you look at the numbers, okay, over here, okay, the big one is the orange. Why? That's net exports pretty much a timid number, but it really has started to surge because of the U.S. dollar. So last month, as it pertained to GDP, 2.7% came from just net exports. So again, all the other pieces not good at all just because of the U.S. dollar. We think that's going to balance itself out, and we're still seeing a lot of negative issues. But Again, we're not fully in a recession at this point. The next piece, of course, is growth. Now, this is showing earnings, 251 companies at this point, negative 3.19%. Eh, big deal, Michael, right? Well, if you look closer, you see energy at 155% positive, okay? Kind of skews things a little bit. The other thing that we look for is we're coming off a very strong last year. So we're seeing rate of change. You look Q2, 21, 25% up, then 17, then 14, right? So the trend is going a different direction. A lot of other factors. We saw another PMI, another manufacturing negative today. In totality, we've got 30 different factors, okay? The other thing with growth earnings, we just showed last week the big story was the fangs. Now, Maybe not the fangs anymore because Facebook's now called Meta. Mangs doesn't sound as good, but we had some really bad earnings except Apple. But did we? Here's Apple. Revenue growth year over year. Now, as they say, the trend is not your friend. 32, 23, 23, 17, 12. Year over year growth, 3%. I think this is very much like Microsoft when they came out quarter uh, before. Didn't really give a, a true summation of what was coming. We're going to see, right? Apple has always been strong. 
Obviously moved big, I think too big based on the overall earnings report, okay? Another thing uh, that we've seen as far as earnings, here's the banks, okay? Negative 8, 17, 25, minus 43%, but guess what? Month to date, look at these numbers, up 20, 22, 11, 15. So we have really bad earnings, year-over-year -year growth rates, and it's up. That tells you something's wrong. All this negative data and the market is up like this doesn't make sense at all, okay? So next, let's talk about our favorites here, the Fed. Now, Janet is the Treasury head now, not the Fed, but this is what's called the blackout period before this, me this week's meeting. Inflation is not becoming embedded. Hello, Janet, where are you? Okay, really, great statement there. Now, before that, uh, the Fed's Kashkari says, I'm seeing signs of a global economic slowdown. And then just a couple days later, Janet comes out. She says, we could face financial instability. Wait, financial stability risk. So kind of flip-flop, big surprise. They're very good at that at both the Treasury and also the Fed. And then you look at the inflation picture. Coming up, right, we had last month's CPI, but one of the Fed's favorite indicator was what's called PCE. Again, it was up 0.57. This just came out on Friday. So again, why do people think the Fed's going to pivot when inflation is still definitively a problem? Now, if you think we have problems, how about Europe? Okay, came out this morning, 10.7% inflation just soaring over there. They've got all kinds of issues. Don't get too much into that right now. I'm focused on the U.S. markets. I mean, we're not really invested in the U.S. markets, but we're surely not in the European or emerging markets right now. So let's go to the big chart. All right, first off, let's go to the big charts here, okay? We look at on the long-term view, mid-term and short-term, and our signals will show you that. So the first is we look at the monthly view. Now, everyone's excited, right up seven and change for the month. Best October since... 1977, okay? October historically is one of the worst months. So we had this big bear market bounce. Now, overall, has anything changed as far as the overall charts? I'm gonna say no, okay? So we're still down here. This red line up there is your 12 month moving average. We're definitively below it. Down here is momentum. We still have a negative crossover, very little movement down there. So at this point, the long-term signal is still very much negative, okay? Now, next up, I'm going to go to the weekly view and give you two views because it's a little bit interesting, okay? So the first one is we're looking at down here is the S&P weekly, okay? We have a 200-day, 200-weekly average, okay? And the reason I'm showing that is a lot of people will say we're not really in a bear market until we cross that, right? If I go back over here, we went under the 200 day, and then you had the crossover where the 50 went over the 200 on the weekly. We actually bounced on that last week and came up. So again, doesn't change my view, okay? When I look at things overall with the charts, okay? We're still in a negative pattern. We're still in a downturn. So midterm, we are still negative as well, okay? I showed this last month kind of shows you the channel from 2009, very definitive channel, okay? And if you look, here's this line here, okay? Put it like that. We did break it, and now we've come up a little bit. So does it again change the overall midterm view? No, it does not, okay? So again, we're still negative. So short term, we've got this bear market bounce, okay? And what exactly is going on? And you can see I've got the chart marked with the negatives, we go down, then we come popping up, okay? We had our big one down here, up 14%, down 17%. So we're up a little bit from our lows. This is from the very low, okay? About, well, it's a little bit less than that, I have 11% because the market was negative today, more closer to 10%, okay, from its lows. But has anything changed at all? Well, first off, what's going on here, okay? We like to talk about FOMO, okay? Fear of missing out. Clearly a uniquely American thing, because if you looked at some of the European charts, we don't see this 
around the world, okay? So people are afraid to miss out, okay? The next thing is, which is just nothing short of shocking, okay? So there's an insider, a Fed insider, Nick Teramos, or however you say his name, got an uh, article we put out a week ago Friday, okay? And that's when the market surged. And at that time, Fed was in blackout, but apparently he is the Fed insider, and he was talking about, well, 75 basis points in November, December might be 50. Well, everyone knew that, but everyone then thought this is the definitive Fed pivot, okay? So the Fed pivot, that's what moved the market up in the last week. That's it. There was no fundamental reasons. The tech earnings, as I said, were horrible last week. Okay, and then ironically, yesterday, Sunday, he comes out with another article and says, well, I think the Fed rate, the terminal rate, long-term rate is going to be very high and sticky for quite some time. Again, someone's ringing in his ear. The Fed maybe thinks the market's gone too far, and the market's down today. Silly, right? I know. No doubt about it. It is definitively silly. So the next thing is, oh, by the way, it's still negative. We're still in a downturn. All right, NASDAQ, clearly, look at that line, straight down, a little bit of a bounce with, again, horrible earnings, still very much in a downturn. And I just show this, this is the NYSE, the full market, new highs minus new lows. And you can see it over here, right? When we're up in a bull market, we're seeing thrust, big thrust of companies, right? And look at this, right? Has it gotten a little bit better? Eh, even today we're negative, right? Big time negative last week, even with that little bit of move. So again, nothing behind this oomph to tell me that the trend has changed in this overall market. Let's go to Sector Spotlight. All right, Sector Spotlight, not a lot to talk about. But another thing last week, while the market was moving on that article, the Fed pivot, there are a couple key components that didn't believe it, okay? One was the U.S. dollar, all right? This is our number one holding in this cycle. You can see the various cycles. We started buying it back in the beginning of the year. It's gone up, trimmed a little bit, bought it again. Tough to see here. This, the U.S. dollar with my uh, charting program, doesn't update until later, so it's showing Friday's numbers. But I'll tell you, we're up about 0.7% again on the dollar today. So all this stuff going on, if the dollar is getting stronger, it doesn't believe that there's a Fed pivot coming. So nice opportunity here. We think we go higher on the U.S. dollar. So the big picture this year I've been talking about is the 10-year Treasury and what's happening, okay? And again, last week, sure, we went down a little bit, but then between Friday and today, we had these two moves to the upside. We're still hanging up there pretty high. Okay, so definitively not convinced when the bond market is telling you something else. The other thing with the bond market I want to let you know, as of now, this is the worst start in history, okay, with bonds. And the last time it was this bad was 1788. I kid you not. I'm putting the uh, little thing on the screen here, okay? So image, that is. The next thing is with the bond market, just like the S&P, you've got a volatility index. You've got the same type of volatility index here. It's called the move index. All right, it's up to 144. Very close. Again, I've got it on the screen here real quick. I dropped on the image. When you look at it, we're as much as 155, which is close to 2020 when things were really pretty crazy. Now, trend, to break trend, to see if we are in a buying opportunity in bonds, is about 115 to 120. We're not even close to that right now, okay? So no opportunity there with bonds, okay? So as bond yields go up, negatively correlated, negatively correlated, okay, is gold. So as yields have gone up, gold continues to go down. These are two things that I've been waiting on. Historically, I've worked well in a cycle, but because of inflation, definitively not working. The one thing that has worked recently is healthcare. Now, this shows the healthcare ETF XLV. Do not own this right now, but I do have a couple, couple names that have done really well, okay? 
and I actually trimmed them last week because they really kind of took off. Still have nice positions, but healthcare at this point does do well in cycle four. The other time it does well, if we have a split house, White House actually does well. So I'm looking at some other opportunities to possibly add there going forward. Let's talk about game plan going forward. Let's go. All right, let's wrap this up here. Game plan going forward. Have we changed our opinion? The answer is no. As we said, we're solidly in cycle four, third quarter, fourth quarter, first and second of next year, okay? Growth slowing. Now, what we saw last week was that beginning, right? And that's just the beginning. It's going to get worse into the fourth quarter. Why? All these companies that got hurt, they're changing their forward projections. They're talking about layoffs and freezes and cutting expenses. All these things you do in a downturn, okay? So right now, we've been through one. We expect three more quarters, fourth quarter, first and second in cycle four. Now, for the pivot crowd, all right, what happens when a Fed actually pivots, okay? Look at this slide right here. It gets worse, okay? Each year, okay, Fed pivots, okay, 18 months, market's down 50%. You can see this, dot-com bubble, right? Fed pivot in 2000, bottom was two years ago, 21 months. So keep in mind, all this Fed hikes, it takes nine months to get into the system. Okay, that's why people are freaking out saying the Fed is going too fast. So be careful what you wish for. Yes, they're gonna stop at some point, but a lot of the pain comes after they are done printing, okay? So what are we doing? Cash is still king. Now, cash has gotten better because of rates, okay? But we have found some ultra short bond funds giving us three, three and a half percent. Cash alternatives are definitely out there. Like I said, we're still in a downtrend right now, but a couple things, but not a lot, okay? Sell on the bounces. Well, we just had one, okay? Add to those hedges. So we had sold some uh, hedges earlier, so we'll probably add in some inverse ETFs as we go forward if this starts to break again. Have a video on some of those things uh, that talk about some of the ways to hedge in downturns. We also have three different managed future funds that have done really well. Okay, but right now, still not going in, but maybe, maybe, maybe that short-term bounce we already just had. The problem was it took off. You don't see an entry from my standpoint, okay? And you're looking at the fundamentals, what's going on, the short squeezes, an article, the pivot. There's nothing behind it, okay? So month end is over. Let's see what happens going forward here on what we do. I don't see it continuing to go up, but if it does, we'll jump with it, okay? And we've talked about bonds and gold. We've pushed that out until we break, okay? Definitely great opportunities there, but not gonna see it for a while. Thanks for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.